Fast Facts in the Heart. So these are a collection of all of the details that you might find if you're about to do the exam paper questions. And sometimes students don't like the heart, so this might make it a little bit easier. Start with location. The heart is located in the thorax, which is your chest cavity. The heart is mostly composed of cardiac muscle, which is very special because it does not tire, it does not fatigue. And you know that muscle is a type of tissue that can contract or shorten. The front surface of the heart is known as the ventral surface. This has been asked a few times. It's more rounded, but you'll also know it because you can observe the coronary artery groove and there are coronary blood vessels in this. The heart is surrounded by a protective membrane. It's called the pericardium. It's a bit like a sac. In fact, it's made up of two layers and in between both layers, a liquid is secreted and this liquid allows for the friction-free movement of the heart. The pericardium protects the heart against friction and also against overexpansion. The heart contains important valves. The semilunar valves are often examined, specifically their exact location. There is one semilunar valve at the base of the aorta and another at the base of the pulmonary artery. How do you expose the semilunar valves? This is often asked as part of the dissection question. Well, there are two semilunar valves. You can either cut down through the aorta with your scalpel to visualize the first semilunar valve, or alternatively, you can cut down through the pulmonary artery, exposing the semilunar valve there also. You're also asked as part of the dissection question about the number of flaps the semilunar valves have. They have three cusps or flaps. As you go through your dissection, always discuss each of the valves. The bicuspid valve on the left side of the heart has two flaps or cusps. The tricuspid valve on the right side of the heart, this has three flaps or cusps and you would visualize this also when you're doing your dissection. The heart diagram is so important. You will either be asked to label it or to draw your own and to label your own diagram. So let's start with the blood vessels. The pulmonary vein here on the left side of the heart, there are two in the diagram and I've labelled one. Blood enters the left side of the heart in a pulmonary vein and it leaves through the big artery, the aorta. And that blood is going to go all around the body and back to the heart again. It enters into the right side of the heart through the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. And then it will drop down into the right ventricle and it eventually leaves the right side of the heart in another artery, the pulmonary artery. And that blood is on its way to the lungs to pick up oxygen. Eventually it will make its way back to the left side of the heart again. Don't worry too much about drawing your diagram. Just make sure you've got all your key labels. So in past exams, these were the key labels required. Vena cava, tricuspid valve, aorta, left ventricle, semilunar valve and pulmonary artery. So you can see a very basic diagram with very simple labels. Very specific questions on the pacemaker are often encountered in the exam. So the real name of the pacemaker is the SA node or the sinoatrial node, and its function is that it controls the heart rate or it generates electrical impulses. You have to know its specific location. It's in the upper right atrial wall. You're often examined on the AV node, the atrioventricular node, and its specific location is very important. It's located in the septum between the right atrium and the right ventricle. So what is the function of the AV node? It collects the impulse that was generated by the pacemaker and this then gets passed down or relayed down through the septum to the ventricles so that they can contract. Cardiac cycle or how the heart beats. This has in recent times appeared more frequently in the exam papers and with diagrams attached also. There's two stages to it. There's diastole when there is no contraction. So no part of the heart is contracting or squeezing. And then there's systole when some part of the heart wall is contracting. So there is atrial systole. This is when the walls of the atria, the top two chambers are contracting. And then ventricular systole. This is when the walls of the bottom two chambers, the ventricles are contracting. So let's take a look at atrial and ventricular systole and the diagrams associated with these stages. The diagrams are important. You're looking to see what valves are open and closed and look at the arrows as well. In atrial systole, when the atria are contracting, the tricuspid and bicuspid valves are open, but the semilunar valves are closed. Really important to notice that. In ventricular systole, when the ventricles are contracting, but not the atria, you can see that the tricuspid and the bicuspid valves are now closed, but the semilunar valves are open and look at the arrows also. So if you can understand those diagrams of the cardiac cycle, you'll be able to understand the heartbeat, the sound the heartbeat has. It has a particular sound, lub-dub, lub-dub, lub-dub. And each part of that sound is created by valves closing. The first part of the sound, the lub sound, is caused by the tricuspid and bicuspid valves shutting. And this is at the beginning of ventricular systole. The dub sound, this is created when the semilunar valves shut and this happens when the ventricles stop contracting, so at the end of ventricular systole. 
It's important to know that the coronary arteries, these are the blood vessels that supply the heart muscle with blood and these branch directly off the aorta. Very important to know where they branch from. Two labels which are often neglected and could appear on your exam, the chordae tendineae, the heart strings attached to the bicuspid and tricuspid valves and then to papillary muscles located on the surface of the ventricle walls. The chordae tendineae, these ensure that those valves open in the correct way and they don't flap backwards up into the atria a bit like this umbrella. So hopefully some of these facts might appear on your next exam. So make sure you're using your textbook, you're completing past papers, but check the official marking schemes essential. The very best of luck.